Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me once again on my YouTube channel. Today is September the 20th of 2021. It's great to be back with you, and I'd like to share another word from the Lord with you today, a word of encouragement that will lift your spirit. As I've mentioned earlier, I live in Canada. And today is an election day for Canada. And for those who've been following what has been taking place in Canada during this time of restrictions, you will understand that many Canadians are struggling. They are losing hope in our government. But today is a day when we can hopefully make a difference with our vote. As I pondered this fact, the Lord impressed upon my heart that we are not to be discouraged, but we do need to rise up and stand up for what is right. The Lord impressed upon my heart that we, as believers in Jesus Christ, are not only citizens of the country that we live in, but we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And the message this day is to encourage you that despite what goes on in the natural realm of politics, we have a king who rules in our lives with righteousness. I looked up the word kingdom in the dictionary, and the Merriam-Webster definition of kingdom is a politically organized community or territorial unit having a monarchical form of government or headed by a king or queen. In Canada, our government is not headed by a king or queen, but it is a politically organized community ruled by government officials. The scriptures tell us that it was not God's idea for the people to be ruled by an earthly king. The Lord wanted the people to look to him for their leadership, but the people wanted an earthly leader. And so the Lord conceded and gave them what they wanted, warning them of man's fallibility. And in our country today and every country of the world, we continue to be ruled by earthly government and bear the consequences of a fallible government. The scriptures tell us that if the government comes into alignment with the principles of God, a nation is blessed. But if that government errs, there is a negative impact on the future of that country. Proverbs 14 verse 34 tells us, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. A second dictionary definition of kingdom is the realm in which God's will is fulfilled. And so there is a secondary kingdom that we give our allegiance to. And so in effect we have dual citizenship and are not fully restrained by the laws of the land given by our government authorities. And yet, we have a choice to make. If we are solely focused on our earthly governments and earthly society, we will be disappointed because man is fallible. But if we look to our King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, who rules us from above, we can find hope in what seems a hopeless situation. And this word today that I'd like to share with you will encourage you that we are not of this world. We are just passing through. That the kingdom of God is an everlasting kingdom. And that it will supersede the kingdoms of the world. And so as we adhere to its principles, follow its doctrines, and walk according to God's law, we will not be disappointed. 
I'll begin this word with scripture. John 18, verse 36. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. If we study God's word, we realize that the kingdom of God does not function like the earthly kingdom in many ways, and living by its rules will find us in opposition to worldly ways. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Once again, this scripture shows us that the kingdom of God and the earthly kingdoms are not compatible, that the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. Romans 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. We see here that the kingdom of God offers us things the world cannot offer us. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Its concern is for the welfare of its people. Philippians 3, verse 20 to 21. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Our citizenship in heaven offers us much hope, hope of the future and eternal life with the Lord. Psalm 20, verse 6 through 8. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. This scripture tells us that our trust needs to be in the Lord God, who always gives us the victory. We cannot trust in the earthly governments of this world. We need to trust in the Lord for our security, for our hope, for our future. And so this is the message today. I'll begin reading the word. Long for my coming, says the Lord. Do not attach yourself to worldly ways, but look up to see what is on my mind. Recognize my plan to come to the nations, to draw hearts to me. All the shaking round about you will result in worldwide revival and intaking of the harvest. So do not be shaken, but look to me and my plan to rescue the lost and to build my kingdom, a kingdom that is not of this world, but will transcend the kingdoms of the world. There are many who do not understand that the kingdoms of the world will be replaced by the kingdom of God. They think they can mix the two and have not understood the message from the beginning. But in this day, I am shaking away security in the world system and releasing revelation of my kingdom being built not by the hands of men, but by the power of my spirit, says the Lord. It will be made clear that the two are at enmity with each other. Those who put their trust in what the world has to offer will suffer loss. But those who live by the law of the kingdom of God will find life abundant. The shaking will loosen the hold of worldly security and give opportunity for men to be brought out from under its spell 
and into light and liberty. This is the day when the Church shall be awakened to her true identity as sons and daughters of God. This word encourages us that though we see the shaking of those things that we are familiar with, those things we put our trust in, and especially earthly governments that we are looking to, to secure our future, that God is building his kingdom and giving all of us the opportunity to put our trust in him instead of the things of the world because our true identity is in him and not in the things of the world. Thank you for listening today. I hope this word will encourage you to draw close to the Lord, to trust him in all that is taking place in the world today because his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom that will one day rule over the whole earth. Be blessed in the Lord. Until next time, bye for now.